Hey, what's up? Welcome to the first of hopefully many game dev tutorial-esque videos on this channel. So what I wanted to showcase was uh, this particle system very right here. And the reason, well, um, I did search around quite, or well, quite a lot. I searched and like looked over the first page on Google and I did not find any that um, came close to this creation I have here. So, well, I thought just like, hey, why not if people want to if people want to know how to make a very cheap, very simple, fairy kind of thing, then uh, this is a good way to do it. And also because um, uh, what you're seeing here is for a game that I... that Well, I'm making a game with a little group. It's for a school project. So um, yeah, I made this and the entire team thought it was really cute. So yeah, I decided to show it. And so, let me just show you a little, it's not only this cute, but I have attached a script to it that makes me able to move it, like it follows the mouse. So you can see here, it actually leaves some particles behind it, which, may, which may just makes it look really pretty. Wee. <laughs> and so I decided to, hey, why not, let's just show other people how to make this. And so, let me actually... Well, create a new object and just start from ground zero with it. So, oh, and also one more thing that I wanted to do, and I can actually do this right now. So let's click create empty. And I did not want to make it a child object. That's my bad. Let's click outside of the hierarchy, create empty. There we go. And let's just click here, search particle system and add that. So, here's one thing that I, um, I don't know if it's well known or not, but something that I discovered and that I use so frequently, we can, um, normally when you highlight an object or click on an object in the hierarchy and then press F, you just simply follow it. But what happens is like, you only focus on it. So that like, when you try and move it on an axis, you won't follow it, not like dynamically. But what I have found, or I don't know if, like, I'm sure somebody else has found it before, but uh, I just wanted to show it. Press Shift F. That will make you, that will make the editor camera focus on the object that you have currently selected. As long as you don't select any other object. So you can move it on any axis, and it will still follow. No matter where you put it. So that's a really useful thing. Something that I don't see that many people use, so I thought that like, hey, why don't I show it? But okay, onto the particle system itself. So we have done this. Now let's create another empty, put it as a child, and um, put another particle system on that. Because the fairy is actually part of a, well, it's a two-part particle system. One is for the giant glowing sphere or a sphere, giant glowing particle, and the second one is for all the tiny particles around. So, let's see what we have here. Actually, I'm gonna do a thing here. I'm just gonna show the things I know, and then we're gonna, because I know there's things I'm gonna fail to do, so I'm just gonna have this original one here as a reference, but I'm gonna try to create it again myself, because, well, I'm the creator of this. So let me see here, we want to use um, the color over lifetime and the size over lifetime and then, where's the last one? Alright, it's on renderer. We want to apply a material which I prefer to be the default particle. Well, okay, yeah, we have this. So now we want to go on to emission and change the rate to a hundred. Then that one's basically done. Then we want to go on to shape and change that from cone to sphere so that we get a 3D space. And um, I think I had that one at 0.7. I think so. Okay, color over lifetime. We want 
to mark this little fella right here and color that something like this and then we don't actually want to use any color here but we want to go on to the alpha put that all the way down perfect then we want to go into size over lifetime and change that one slightly to if I remember correctly, begin at sort of half or like half the max size and then just go all the way down somewhere right there. And let's just adjust this thing for reasons. Looks pretty close. That should be most things that we need to do with that one. Yeah. So um, with the start color here, you can apply a start color, but the thing is, if you do, you're going to overwrite the uh, gradient color that you have. Unless you have the exact same color, then, it, then it's not going to give a shit about what color you have. Okay, so here is a uh, really important part. You want the simulation space to be world and not local. Because like, like you could already guess, I'm assuming. If you have the local, it will um, move in the local space its own space, or the parent space in this case. But if it's in the simulation space world, then as soon as the particles spawn, they will just have like their own world position and kind of float outwards in the world position regardless of where the, of where the parent is, or itself. Okay, so here comes the tricky part, so I'm just gonna have to look at this fella to see what I have on it, so, okay, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 1, 1, or 0 0.5, 0, 0.5, 1, 1, yeah. Point 0.5, point 0.5, not point 0.6, 0, 0.5, one, one, pretty please. Thank you very much. And the start size, where are you at? Okay, start size is one. Simulation speed is one. Yeah, so that, so that should really be it for that one. Yeah, it looks pretty close. And for all the other stuff here, we want to have looping set to true, we want to have play on the wake, and, um, well, you can have random CD if you want or not. I don't think it really matters that much. But next part, the child object, the ginormous glowing thing in the middle. That's a really interesting thing. So we want to go into renderer once again, assign the default particle material, Close that one off. We will need color over lifetime, but I am unsure if we need... Let's do size over lifetime just in case, because I don't really remember if I use that or not. Still color over lifetime, we want to have the same color or as close to the same color as possible. So let's just go back on, onto here. Select that color. Copy the hex color code. And then just go back onto the child object. Mark that one, color, and paste it. And do the exact same thing as before for the alpha value. There we are. Shape, I believe we want to have sphere once again. Emission. Emission, I believe, 5 is fine. And for this, we want to have the simulation speed at, I think, 0 0.01. Okay, let's see, what else did we have? We had 
0.5, 1, so 0.5, 1, negative 1, 0.5, 1, and the negative 1. And the reason for negative 1 is because we don't want those particles to like accidentally float away when we move. We want to have them moving constantly towards the center of the particle effect no matter where we are. To get the best possible simulation of a sort of body in the middle. So that's why we have the negative 1. Start size, I believe I had that at 10. Or maybe 5. Oh, 7. Makes sense. Yeah, you see, we're getting close to this little fella right here. Gravity modifier shouldn't be changed. I think I nailed simulation speed, yes. Oh yeah, and something I found out that got really annoying. It seems to not happen every time. But in case you were to try this, and then like when you start the scene, let's see if it happens, yeah you can see, the big center or the center particle, the big body particle, isn't spawning. And if that happens, just set pre-warm to true. That will make sure that this spawns properly. You see? Neat. So yeah, that should really be most things. Emission, yeah, 5, shape should be sphere. Alright, radius, I forgot all about that. Radius to 0.7. So there we have color and size of lifetime, okay. And that one I had set like that. Let's see if I can copy that. Oh shit, that's not what I meant to do. Something like this, I believe I had. Yeah, it looks pretty close. Of course you're gonna have to fiddle around quite a lot to get like something close to this, or well, even to what I have right now. But this should really be it. And just to demonstrate, if I go onto this one and put on another script that I've already made. And then we deactivate you for now. We should see something that's pretty similar to the one we already had. Yeah. So yeah, it's much smaller and the particles doesn't last that long. But you see, we have something that is very similar and still really pretty. And looks like a fairy. The whole point of this video. Showcasing a particle fairy in Unity. Yeah, I'm pretty pleased. This is basically, as I said, what I wanted to show. And I'm still pretty pleased about how it turned out. Of course, you're gonna have to play around with it if you want to get something similar to this or this, but this is basically how to get something close to this and something that's still gonna be, well, really pretty and um, quite useful, I guess. Since it's not actually a model or something, it's just straight up a particle system. It's, um, I guess, kind of cheaper, but still not. Um, I don't really know. But hey, either way, that's it. Just saying, in case there is a need to, like, um, if you who's watching want to see how I um, made the particle system follow the mouse, I can show the script for that. But for now, we're going to end, end it off here. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then be sure to let me know by smashing that like and sub button, leaving an awesome comment, and following me on social media. Now have a good one, and I'll see you later.